Welcome to Adventure in Art. My name is Ben Staley, your resident talking head. I, I'm excited about what I'm talking about in this video. Because let, let me back up though and give you a little context. I shoot digital, yes, that's mostly what you see on this channel, but I shoot a lot of film, or at least I used to. I love shooting film. My favorite camera is actually, shoot, it's sitting right here. This is, this is my favorite camera of all time, this Leica M6. I love this camera. It's a 30 plus year old camera, maybe more. It was gifted to me by my friend Mark. I'm not even sure when he got it, back in the 90s, I think. So that makes it, yeah, 30-ish years old. I just, I don't have any digital Leicas anymore, but I'm never getting rid of this. And it's just my favorite camera to go out and shoot with. And I have a couple other 35 millimeter film cameras and I love them. Actually, there's a, there's a couple of videos coming up next that feature 35 millimeter film. And I, maybe you're gonna see a little bit of that preview footage in this video. A couple of years ago, I bought a flatbed scanner so that I could cut down on the cost and I could maybe have a local lab develop the film. I live like literally a mile from Richard's Photo Lab, which is one of the top labs in the whole country. They're right down the street. And so I, have them develop my film, but you know, it's like, it's like 25 bucks to have basic scans and developments. And that's like, after you've spent 10 to $15 on the film, that's like 35 to $40 for a roll of film. That's more than a dollar a shot. That just seems kind of ridiculous. So I bought a flatbed scanner and I thought, well, I'll have them develop the, the film and I'll just do the scanning myself. And then I can, I can do it more high res and I can have more control and I can get the scans I want. And I've been doing that for a couple of years, but I hate it. I hate it. It's so time consuming. It's so fidgety. It's like in and out of these holders. And as much as I, I dust them and blow the air off and there's, it's like, then I got to spend a long time just on the computer cleaning like dust and hairs and just stuff off of the off the scan it's just tedious and it's been holding me back and i'm just like i know i don't want to i bought the scanner i don't want to pay to have the lab now scan my film that just would be a double waste right but i just i just haven't i haven't dug using the scanner so i heard about where's it at heard about this, the Veloy Easy 35. And I was super intrigued. I'd seen some YouTube videos about it. There's, there's a bunch out there. A bunch of people have been using this thing for like the last year or something. And, and I came across it. And so I reached out to these folks and I said, uh, Hey, I'd love to review it. And they kindly responded. So just spoiler alert, they sent me this, but the opinions are my own. I'm not obligated to, to say, anything except my own opinion. They, they didn't even ask that. Uh, I do want to make a whole video about it because I love it so much and it's changed. It's, it's changed. It, it's inspired me. It's made me want to shoot film more and I'm more excited than ever to be shooting with my M6 again. In fact, by the time you watch this, I'm in Australia on an expedition and you better believe that I bought a bunch of black and white film and I'm taking this and I'm going to well, you're probably gonna see it in the future on the channel because uh, I love this thing. Here's how it works. It's basically just this little box with a light source. Here's, here's the button, you turn it on and then boom, see that? It just, it just boom. And then you take, you take a digital mirrorless camera of which I have one and a macro lens. Now it comes with a bunch of adapters, so there's probably gonna be the right step up ring or step down ring or whatever for whatever lens you have. I have this S prime 100 millimeter uh, macro lens and then you just screw it on. Boom, and then you just adjust it. And you get it just right so it's all even and level. And it basically comes with a bunch of different rings that you put on and you just have to figure out, okay, what's the exact optimum distance for your lens and your sensor so that 
When you take a negative, slide it in here, it basically fills the frame and you, you've got the whole thing. That's all you do. You slide in your negative in here, you line it up, boom, you put this on manual focusing, you get critical focus. I stop down to about five, six, and I usually shoot in, in uh, aperture priority. I do exposure compensation plus one. And then you just slide, do the next one, do the next one. In a couple minutes, you can have scanned an entire roll of film. It's freaking amazing. So what's this? Uh, there's a lot to cover here. And uh, I, I have, they also sent this little um, device that they sell with it, which is this little unit that screws on, if you can see here. And it's got these little kind of brushes here. So it's like a de-duster. So you slide the film through that. Those brushes take off all, most of all the dust, excess material that might be on the film. Because there's always stuff on there, microscopic stuff, small stuff that you can't see. It's stuck on there. These little brushes really help. And this is an add-on to the Easy 35. They sent it kindly. This is where the film comes out. Now there's, there's this um, block in here that the film goes through. There's a couple different ones. So you can get a different one uh, that will take slides if you have slide film that you want to scan with this. They also sent one that is a little wider. So if you wanna actually scan uh, like the sprocket holes in the negative and have that look, a lot of people like that. They sent me that and I tried it. You're gonna see that in an upcoming video, by the way. Uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. Uh, but I just found I used that on a couple rolls and then I just went, you know what? That's not really my thing right now for what I'm doing, but maybe in the future it will be. There's not a lot more to say, it's that simple. Slide in the negative, put it on the desk, take a picture, bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Here's what I love about this, okay? My Lumix S52X has this uh, setting where I can do a high res shot. So I can put it on that. And what it does is it does a little pause and then it takes like, I think eight pictures in the space of like five seconds and stitches them together and I get like a hundred megapixel image. So I can, okay, that's ridiculous, but I can, I can get hundred megapixel scans of my 35 millimeter film. It's kind of epic and I've done it and it's like, Yes, that's that's way more megapixels than the resolution of the film. Yes, that's why it's ridiculous. But it's also like the most epic scan that you can get. And it looks amazing. You get it sharp and then the detail that you have, it's beyond anything that I've seen from my 35 millimeter uh, film digitally rendered before. And I just love it. And that's actually how I scan all my film. Now, it takes, yes, it takes a little longer. Uh, if, if you're just doing like standard resolution, which is what this would be is 24 megapixels, still plenty big to print them out as big as you're gonna want to. It's a little slower to do the, the high res mode, but um, I think it's cool and I like it. This 100 millimeter S prime is such an epic lens for this. And and uh, I, feel like, I feel like I'm just kind of lucky with this setup in that I have, I feel like I have the perfect camera and lens set up for this, but literally whatever brand you have, get a macro lens and there's gonna be an adapter and you can put this on. I love this thing. I'm gonna be shooting more film and I'm gonna go back and rescan a whole bunch of my favorite shots on some of the old negatives. And I've wanted to do this for a long time because I do have ambitions about maybe doing some kind of book or a zine series or something. And the thought of like going through that process with the flatbed scanner, it's sitting over there on the floor. That's why I keep looking this way, like, like F U flatbed scanner. It's over there in the box on the floor in my office. But the thought of using that thing to go back through all, like I have, I have books here, check this out. You want to see, here's how much, like, this is just one book of negatives. And, and I have multiple, but it's just like the thought of going through 
all this and like trying to find the shots that I would want to see in and just that painstaking process with the flatbed. It'd probably take me a freaking year. With this thing, it's so fast. I went through the other day and I pulled out right away, pulled out some of my favorite shots, zip, put it in, boom, had them 100 megapixels on my laptop, sent them off. I'm having them printed right now. So I'm going to see what that actually looks like. Printed out. Nothing bigger than 8x10, but I just want to see how they, what they look like 8x10. So basically then you have the images just on an SD card. And so you just import those into Lightroom. They're negative, so you have to go through a little process and you have to, you have to flip the negative and... Uh, should I talk about that? That's a whole other thing. You can, you can do it right in Lightroom by inverting the curves uh, or, or you can just use like software like Negative Lab Pro, which is a plugin for Lightroom. I'm probably gonna check out Negative Lab Pro, and so maybe I'll just get into the editing process later when I've done that a little bit more. So far, I've just been editing them right in Lightroom, just inverting the curve and and uh, just tweaking the contrast and that kind of stuff, and, and it's been just fine. It's been amazing. What don't I like about it? Um not very much sometimes i've had a couple rolls i've only done a couple rolls i got one roll back and it was you know how when you sometimes you get your negatives back and they're kind of all curved and bent especially on the ends where they were wrapped really tightly with when i had the when i had the sprocket the wider little uh card in there for for doing the sprockets um it was the, the bent negatives were getting caught up a little bit. And I had to monkey with them to get them to slide all the way through like they would catch on the in, inside. And that was a little difficult. That's the only downside. Once I took the sprocket holder out and just have the regular 35 millimeter holder in there with no sprockets, it flattens out the negative much better. And I didn't have that issue at all. So it's been only a pleasure to work with. I, I know I'm just like really... I, I just sound like a fanboy, but I am a fanboy. I love this thing so much. And I'm stoked about kind of being able to scan my 35 millimeter film into the computer much quicker now. What I'm actually gonna do, I think, with the upcoming roles that I get developed, usually I have them cut into like, you know, sections, but I think I'm just gonna have them not cut at the lab and I'm gonna take the whole roll and I can just put one end in and I can just pull it out when I get to a uh, like six, I'll cut it, boom, cut it, boom, cut it. But then I'll, I'll just be able to slide the whole thing through without stopping and shoot a whole roll in the space of five or 10 minutes. And it's going to be, it's going to be rad. I'll put a link down below. You can buy this uh, on their website, which is like the camera store, which is like a European store. I think you can actually buy this on the Cine Still website as well. The whole thing's only 258 bucks. Like, hello. And that comes with the step up rings, all the tubes you would need, the sprocket adapter and this little brush duster are extra, but just the basic unit, 258 bucks. Of course you need a digital camera and you need a macro lens. I love this thing. I'm gonna go shoot some film. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment if I didn't cover anything. Yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down below. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon.